Wonderful. Thanks so much. Uh, my name is Scott Stauffer. We're going to be doing some web scraping today with the Microsoft Fabric platform. Um, we're going to be using guide dog data. Uh, there, is, there are some dogs in the house in the back, and there's some dogs out front in the inclusive zone, inclusive lounge. Um, so we'll get started. Uh, this, of course, was the uh, PowerPoint uh, auto-generated image, and I thought, that's not bad, because it, I, I did have the title Service Dogs in the Cabin as opposed to Guide Dogs in the Cabin, so it found a fantastic picture. A little bit about me or us. Um, uh, I, I, an, analytics, uh, an, an analytics architect at Iteration Insights, based out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada, but I'm actually based in uh, the Vancouver area of British Columbia, so I'm further west. Uh, all of the information that, that I'll be going over today will be available on GitHub. So if you've got the slide decks, I know the slides aren't there yet. The slides will be up, uh, loaded as soon as I finish this session. Uh, it, it, you'll be able to access the, uh, uh, the content with GitHub. Uh, this is my virtual, uh, uh, my virtual friend, Annie uh, Penny Felix. She's named after, of course, her mother and father. Uh, and uh, she uh, was a guide dog in training, and she's actually a PTSD dog now. So uh, uh, there'll be feedback uh, that we'd like to elicit from the attendees and the virtual attendees. Please uh, scan and provide feedback. It gives you an opportunity to win a prize, and it gives you an opportunity to donate to uh, guide dogs or, their, or, or another charity. Uh, the, I guess SQL Bits make it a donation on your behalf for simply make it, giving feedback, which I think is awesome. Uh, so our flight plan for today, we're going to talk about CSS selectors. So we'll be doing a demo on that. We'll also be looking at uh, Chromium, find the selector with, uh, with Chromium. Uh, we'll also be giving a little hat tip to uh, Selector Gadget as it's... Uh, so it's getting a little long in the tooth, so we're not going to really use and, and uh, do a demo on that one. Uh, and then there's a, we'll also be looking at uh, using Power BI to look at that. Uh, but what is this all for? What are, we, what are we attempting to do at the end of this? At the end of the second leg of the journey, what we would hope to produce is something that looks a little bit like this. So this is a Power BI report. And with the data that we've scraped from the International Guide Dog Federations, we'll have locations of all of the affiliate members of the International Guide Dogs. And we'll be able to use tooltips and uh, hover over and find uh, more pertinent information so that people can donate or volunteer, uh, call up, go visit some of these international associations. Uh, you'll notice that, hey, there's not too many in the US. There's actually a lot more locations of the same organization. The pinpoints are, are simply the head offices. So if you're kind of curious, hey, wait, there's one near me. I know there's some uh, uh, puppy raisers near me. Uh, it, most of the organizations are distributed across the countries that they reside in. So, But this is what uh, uh, we'll be producing. Uh, so let's start off with CSS selectors, CSS. So, CSS is cascading style sheets. And for a lot of people, I don't know, I did not take any web development in college. Um, the only stuff I learned about HTML is things that I learned on my own. And CSS selectors were one of those things like, ah, you know, I really don't need to look into that. Uh, but if you've worked with Power BI, and uh, how many people are using Power BI in the room? OK, all right, so that the audience is, is almost unanimous in, in that space. Um, so. How many of you have worked intensely with HTML and CSS? Who would consider themselves web devs? OK, so again, also the audience I'm looking for, nobody put up their hand. This is, this is good news. And the thing is, the development team at Microsoft, when they developed this capability, they looked for the proper solution. They didn't look at the audience of who was using it. But I, I think that's probably not the worst place to start, because they don't have to recreate the wheel. They can leverage this concept in web development called CSS selectors to select instead of the things that you want to style for cascading style sheets, but it's going to be leveraging this to do the scraping. And scrapers uh, that exist in Python, Python libraries, uh, they'll leverage these same CSS concepts. So it was, a, it was the best choice uh, instead of recreating the wheel. Uh, so the, I included the screenshots just so that if uh, things went horribly wrong, we'd be able to still uh, do a presentation. 
But what I have here are two web pages that I hand wrote because I went to some websites and you see a lot of garbage in there. And it's like, ah, there's, there's too much noise in that website. I just want to uh, create uh, a something basic so that uh, people can understand where we're at. So uh, we have, th this is a, a one page uh, website. So how many people have a, f a little familiarity with the concept of HTML tags? Okay, good. Almost everyone's got their hand up, so I'm not going to go into uh, great detail around that. I'm going to make the, the uh, text a little larger now that you can see it does all fit into one screen. And, and it is showing up there good because uh, I'm getting uh, mixed messages on my screen here. Uh, oh, actually. Aha. I'm going to have to end the show. Let's end the slideshow here. Ah, fantastic. Thought I was wrong, but I was mistaken. Here we are. Let's go to here. And let's go to here. There we are. OK. So we'll have two, two brief demos on this. And so on the left, you can see I've, I've got region one. I'm going to actually, is, how is that for site? Would you like me to make it a little bigger? Yeah, hands up. Bigger? No, looks like everyone's good then. OK, everyone's good. So uh, in, in this HTML tag head, I've got a style tag. And then I have dot region. And dot region, what it does is it says, ah, OK, so I want to select anything. The dot just indicates class. So when you say the dot, uh, you can see down here in this div tag, we have class. Class is, is, is just a way of, of indicating uh, this element is something we want to give a name to, and we want to use it throughout. Uh, or th this style, I should say, is something we want to give a name to, and we want to use this style in multiple places. So we want to refer to it as a class, and we'll give it a name of region one. So in our code, when we, when we reference that with CSS, we use dot region. If we simply want to, uh, and, and what I'll do here is, is you can see on the right, uh, I've got the web page that's live version of what's running on the left. And if I save it, it'll update the web page. Uh, so if I change this instead of dot region to uh, simply h1, and h1 is just a header definition, and you can see it's right here. Here's our h1. And then I save the document with the control s. If I turn this back on, it may have turned off. There we go. Let's do that. Fantastic. So let's just go. There we go. Let's just do this again. OK, so it was region one. And now we can even look at region two. And you can see region two is referenced down here in the code. And so we will do control S, S again. And so the CSS selector, we're just using it to find what we want to grab. So you can imagine that's for, for styling, but now we want to, we'll, we'll want to perhaps look at something like a table or a list item. We can also do this here. And we can, instead of doing a region two, we can do an LI. And an LI is, LI is just a list item. And you can see in, in the hierarchy, we'll just actually control S this really quick. And these are all list items. So it's highlighted the light blue because we've, we've defined that in the style. Um, now we might also say, well, what about if we tried the UL? This is a great way of just kind of checking out, OK, well, what will that give us? Oh, and I control S. And it gives us the same thing. So there's different things that we can get at different levels of the hierarchy. And it, with those different levels, it will d it define different things. So we could also say, give us all the spans. And it'll choose all the spans. So you can see that we can leverage the different tags. And so what we will probably look at is we would look at defining different classes. And we could say, well, what if we wanted to do more than one thing? What if we want to do all the spans and all the lists? We can separate it by a comma, and it'll do both. So we can do combinations of things. Uh, and we can also do some other things with regards to first and second item. But let's, let's jump over to our example that uses an HTML table. And I'm just going to have to turn live server on this one now. 
There we go. And with this example, it's a little bit longer because I have a few more tables that I've created. But the same concept, uh, we, can, we can see here on the left, we have this table and the TR is a table row. Cheers. And then we, the uh, TH tag here reference the table header. And then I, I guess TD is a table data item. I, I'm, I'm guessing on some of these, but it, it seems like it's a pretty logical uh, thing. And then all those live within the uh, table body. And they li the, the table body lives in with the table. And the table lives within the div. So you can, you can reference things as well through, through the paths down the hierarchy. So I just added a comment block up in the, in the text as well so we can pop in some examples here. So we looked at H1 and we looked at span and we, we didn't really look at uh, P for paragraphs, but you can do the same thing. Uh, but we have different regions, but we also have different, uh, uh, we also have a set here as well, control C. So let's style this. And let's do this. So we're just going to execute this, save it, I should say. And you can see there's set one. And where do we see set one? Well, we have classes that start with period. If we have IDs in our tag, those are only used once in an HTML page. Uh, so probably not something that you'd be using very often for scraping data. But perhaps if you just wanted to grab one cell that gives you something like page two of seven, uh, something like that might be something you might need to scrape. So you might leverage that ID um, element of the, of, the, uh, of the tag, or the uh, piece of the element, I should say. Uh, so you, you would put a, a pound sign or a hash uh, sign in front of uh, the set one. Uh, so again, you can, you can uh, add uh, more than one element to scrape at a time. But you can also look at the nth child. And so let's do that, control C. And this is stacking some of the, the concepts as well, because what we have here is we're saying we're grabbing the, uh, the table and we want the nth child, oops. Looks like I missed a closing bracket there, oops. <laughs> let's give that a try again, okay. There we are. Let's just save that. And what we've grabbed is, is we've grabbed the first column. Uh, and so, but you can see here, we, we've grabbed the nth child so of, of all of the things. So this is basically going down the hierarchy. So let's, let's back up though. Let's do this one. Let's give this example, which we'll see. It's actually uh, not, not the best one to start with. Let's, uh... Okay, control S. Ooh. Actually, nope. Oh. Ah, what's we? Oh, I changed the thing here. Ah, you know what? Let's uh, let's go back here. Ay ay ay! I think I can replace this. Hold on. Okay. What I'm attempting to do, oh, look at that. Okay, control Z. What, uh, what the IntelliSense is actually helping me do when I had this selected is a, a moment ago, oh, there it is. There we are. Uh, so it's actually telling us the hierarchy that it's traveling through that it's attempting to do its selectors on. It's, it's trying to operate at the set two area and it's trying to grab the fifth child in the table, and it's attempting to find the second element of that child. So some things can get quite, uh, go down through the hierarchy. So to define what that is, sometimes it's best just to simply go into your website. Uh, and so what we're gonna quickly jump over to is we're gonna open up this in Chrome. And let's, now when I say Chromium, Chromium Chrome is really, thanks. Chromium is, is really, just a, a piece that uh, uh, browser technologies have grabbed. Chrome 
uh, open sourced uh, its web technologies. And this is not what I was hoping for. Let's uh, go back here. Uh, let's go to any web, let's, see, let's go to this website. Let's uh, maximize this. And if we click on the inspect, if we right click on an area of a website and we say inspect, we can see the different areas and it tells us on the left hand side, oh, this is the div, oh, this is the, this is the table. It gives us the selector's names. And then down at the bottom here, it tells us the path through those selectors. So you can use this to help write your CSS selector. I'm just actually going to open up the guide dog. Hmm. And my browser got closed. OK. There we are. Nope. OK. Let's just quickly check this one out. So this is the International Guide Dog Federation. And we're looking at one particular location. And it seems that, ah, uh, wonderful. Yes, that was a problem. Okay. There we are. Okay. So when we when we go here and we right click, if we wanted the address, for instance, and the phone number and the uh, website, we can go here and we can say inspect. And we can see that on the right here, we can see that it's the div.element-text-editor-elementor-clearfix. That is the HTML uh, selector that we will need to use to grab that data element. So uh, we're going we're gonna to full forward here because I'm running very low on time, unfortunately. And we're going to look at what this actually looks like. So we're going to go into uh, transform data. And we're going to look at our all guide dog members. And we're going to actually right click here. This will probably be better if we go advanced editor. Ah, wonderful. OK. So what we have here, if we hit enter here, we have the different CSS selectors that we're grabbing for each of these elements. And it makes it a little easier if we go and we uh, take these and break them down like this and say, OK. So what we're grabbing is we're grabbing two rows. And we're giving the first, or, or we're grabbing two columns. And the first column is IGDF, IGDF continent. The second one is the continent link. And you can see that the UL is your user list. And we're grabbing the nth last child three. So that there, there's different children that were in the hierarchy. Uh, Power BI helped us find those, what they were. Uh, but we can go and change them and make additions if we need to uh, change some of the things. That's where we would change it. Uh, and then in this HTML.table, we also have, thank you, uh, have this concept of a row selector. And the row selector helps us define what uh, of that area makes up what would be considered a row to be pulled in. So it can be challenging to, to, to reel that in. But we've indicated that the, uh, the list item on the, uh, the uh, uh, third uh, nth last child three, the third element uh, of, of the last child, is the one that is, is, the, is the construct that we'll be grabbing for the list. And I apologize. We have run very short on time. Uh, this didn't quite work out the way I'd planned. Uh, this, video, or this session will likely be uh, followed up with, with an additional YouTube video in the very near future to resolve some of those, uh, the, the, the loss of uh, fidelity in the session. Uh, apologies. I'm going to jump back to the slide deck for a moment here. Uh, so, 
CSS selector is, is a tool that you can look at. It's an add-in or a plug-in to your browser, and it allows you to highlight CSS selectors, and it gives you the path to those things, and it helps you in a visual way. I find on some websites it's not working uh, so much so well anymore as it is 10 years old, uh, but on some websites it may work just fine. Uh, uh, did a, Power, a short Power BI demo. Here's some of the, the text of that simple table uh, and some of the, the uh, Power Query the, or the M code that'll construct that. Uh, and uh, on a simple example here, you can also see that uh, uh, it's pulled that out with that code. There are some, uh, here's, here are the resource slides. So if, if you're interested, there's an ultimate guide, a YouTube video, an ultimate YouTube guide. Uh, by Kyle Cook, and it's uh, a 20 minute video accompanied by a blog post that helps really dive into the CSS selector. Uh, additionally, the uh, w3school.com has CSS, CSS tutorial, which is also very good. Uh, there's the link for the selector gadget as well. Uh, the code I used to make the uh, website live on, on the, uh, uh, in the VS Code window is called uh, Live Server. And uh, yeah. A, a, there's the feedback slide. Please feel free to uh, provide some feedback uh, and uh, donate to a charity when you do so. And uh, thank you. We're at time. Thanks so much.